ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas presents. You know, I have some ideas about some presents we can talk about I want to hear about presents. We're going to be talking about the past, but we're still talking about presents, right? Correct. All right, let's talk about it. Welcome to Nonsensicality Christmas Presents. So it's we may talk about the present, but probably last week we talked about the past, more traditions. This week we're going to talk about presents, as in gifts. Gifts. Just so we're not all confused. It's, it's all about, about gifts. All, all about gifts and, and the mania that surrounds Christmas giving, right? That's right. All right. Are you ready? I, I think I am. Um, are we talking about like our favorite gifts? Yeah, I, all I, of it. I can remember. Are we doing that now? Are we going to do that in a little we're gonna bit? We're going to do it later. Okay, so what are we going to talk about now that... Well, Are you going to edutain us? I'm going to attempt to edutain you. Okay, let's do it. Okay, go back in your mind to your childhood Christmas time. Yeah. All right, you yeah. have the Christmas tree. Sure. Now, did the presents like just appear as they were bought and wrapped slowly? Or was it pretty empty under the tree and then you wake up Christmas morning and it's, oh, there they are. There's a little of both. Okay, because okay, I, I honestly think most parents understand that if there's not something out there to get the interest going, then, you know, it's not as magical. But it also, if they were all out well in advance, it's also not as magical the day of Christmas. Like, oh, there they are, you know. And so our my parents did a little of both. Um, I think sometimes by Christmas Eve, they were all out just to taunt us. Um <laughs> And we would get to open maybe one on Christmas Eve. But uh, usually it was just like a few gifts under there, and it was usually the lame gifts, like the socks and underwear, you know, things like that. The so socks. if we were to peek, it'd be like, oh, boy. Socks and underwear. Now, some underwear were cool. Like, I, my brother and I had underoos. Remember those? I do. And so we had those, and, like, we were really young. It was I was a kindergartner, I think. And what was funny was I, I had Incredible Hulk underoos. And my brother had Spider-Man underoos. And, uh, but when we grew up and became like teenagers, our favorite superhero, mine was Spider-Man and his was Incredible Hulk. So I think we were inadvertently advertising to each other. That's funny. <laughs> so that's good. Way to go, underoos. You, you're marketing well, I guess. That's funny. We didn't apparently look at ourselves in the mirror enough. And so, I guess not. But uh, anyway, so the, it was usually, uh, yeah, there was a few gifts out there and then the explosion of gifts on Christmas morning. And then, and then. We'd open up everything, and then there would be the, the super sneaky surprise gift at the very end. I love the surprise gift. Because it's closet. always something epic. It's not yeah. like, here it is, a roll of deodorant, because you stink. No, it's a like... A roll of deodorant. I, I, I don't know if I ever got deodorant for Christmas, but anyway. Uh, it was usually something... Like, I remember I got a pellet gun that way once, which is weird, because I think we opened up the CO2 cartridges and the pellets earlier, and we're like... What is this for? I mean, like, we had to kind of play dumb so mom and dad could be like, well, it's here, you know, and so, but, yeah, so Did most you get of... the you'll shoot your eye out speech? Um, no, because that was the same year my brother got a 22, so it was more along the lines of you'll blow your brains out kind of thing right. if, if you're not careful. So, now we were actually, I'd already done hunter safety by that point, so I was actually very educated in firearm safety and all that. We were very, and mine wasn't obviously a firearm. It was a, a pellet gun. Pellet gun. So, we had... The presents under the tree, and then kind of like you, we would have the epic, huge... Yeah. I mean, my parents would stay up, I think, until like 1 a.m. to make sure we were like certainly asleep, and then bring out all the presents that they And then when hiding. we get up at 5, they're surprised. Like, uh -huh. they're up till 1, we get up at 5, and they're like, why are you up already? And I'm like, you're surprised? It's came. Christmas, and you have... There's just this huge... Mass amount of gifts under the tree now. Yeah. The Christmas lights on the tree would always stay on all through Christmas night, oh. Christmas Eve. So when you'd wake up at five, it was this. <gasps> it just looked yeah. like a postcard. It's just funny because I don't think we ever unplug our Christmas lights the entire Christmas season. No, we, we just don't. leave them there. <laughs> so Toby has something to see when he pees on our tree, like we talked about last week. Oh, that's gross. Okay, did you peek at the presents? No. Um, not very often. We were more, our family's more about trying to guess. So like my dad and my mom and all, we drop clues. Like the whole family. If we got my parents something, we would drop clues. And it was more kind of this whole detective. It was kind of fun, you know, trying to figure out and seeing if they're dropping clues, if they're just, you know, talking like regular, you know. And so sometimes it, the clue could be very woven into just conversation. So that was how our family was more about doing. I was more about trying to guess. Because if I peeked, then I just 
I cheated myself out of guessing what was right or, you know, what, whether I was right or not. But if I were, you know, like guessing, like I would pick it up, I'd shake it, smell it, whatever. And, but I would not peek because I wanted to be right whenever I guessed. See, I peeked. I think my brother peeked. I think he was a peeker. I unwrapped him. Well, Fully that's... unwrapped him. I got really, really good at it. You couldn't even tell I had touched it. I unwrapped it. It was delightful. I rewrapped it. I mean, I'd shake them and stuff, too, and then what, guess. What, what was the point of that? I mean, oh, so you'd want to find out if you were right, but then you only proved to yourself you were right. Correct. Oh, no, no, no. It was, it was almost like bragging rights in our home if we were to guess our gifts. So I did not <laughs> guess the pellet gun that year. Nope, did not. So, okay, my mom would always have, like, the stage presence. Can we, can we open something? Can we open something? Can we open something? No, 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 no. But I think she always wrapped or bought, like, the one thing that she knew we could open without don't tell anyone you're getting this present early to keep yeah. us entertained when we were yeah that's what reaching Christmas our obnoxious yeah. no this would be like two hours after we got out of school for the christmas break oh so you just have something to do during christmas uh -huh. break no um we yeah it was christmas eve and it was almost like this big we had to present our case to our parents as to why <laughs> we should open at least one gift on Christmas Eve. So I mean like seriously, even then it was like this it was a we had to convince them why. And I, the only thing I ever remember opening up on Christmas Eve was a bag of army men. And it was fun. But that's the only thing I ever remember from opening on Christmas that's Eve. So uh, was a bag of army men. But I don't think we did Christmas Eve. What about stockings? Did you do stockings first or, or after? After. So we did ours before, if we had them. We didn't always have stuff in our stockings. Uh, sometimes they were just more decorations, but then, you know, we would do. Um, you know, our stockings were pretty epic. There was always something awesome in the stocking. It wasn't just like, here's all the junk candy that we bought you, and, you know, here's a candy cane. There's always something really good in the stocking. Don't forget the orange. you got to put an orange in the stocking. <laughs> at the bottom. I did not realize that that was a tradition until we were married. And, really? And your family uh, d did that. There would be, like, your yeah. dad's side, your... Yeah, and I was just like, "Yeah, thanks, fruit. <laughs> there's there's a whole bowl on the table, but thanks for the one in the sock. <laughs> but it was, thanks for the one in the sock. It was, you know, I, I think it's a tradition and maybe good luck. I think really it's honestly, it's cold season. You need vitamin C is, is what it stems from. It's a gift from. of health. It's it the, the gift, gift of health. The gift of health. Now, I remember every year my mom would buy my grandpa the same gift every year. Socks, underwear. An old spice. I remember that. Shave. I remember that because when we were dating so and first married, we we got to be a part of that. Yeah. Oh, poor grandpa. But he liked it. Oh, he did like it, but and he probably needed it. It was probably his annual, you know, sock underwear throw and, the and old smell stuff good supplies. And, yeah. <laughs> but like never anything fun. Same three gifts every year: socks, underwear, old spice, something. And Which is funny. Back spice. then, old spice was like for old people. Now, old spice is like it's been rebo it's reborn. Cool. It's cool again. So. All right, so so you got some facts for us about Christmas presents? I do. Got... I have some. All right, let's hear it. Okay, so the stockings. You mentioned stockings. Yes. Hanging stockings comes from the Dutch custom of leaving shoes packed with food for St. Nicholas's donkeys. I'm sorry, could, could you repeat that? St. Nicholas's what? Donkeys. So does when he leaves North America, or I guess before, it depends on what he hits first, when he goes to Holland, does he just like switch out for donkeys then? The reindeer might be tired. I, I guess so. Maybe maybe he has teams, you know. That... He drops, you know, that's the he drops them off and and, and, and then they eat out of the kids' shoes. Yes, and because they left treats for the donkeys, he would Saint Nicholas would give them some presents. See, I think Americans they just cut right to the chase. Forget the feeding the reindeer. Although some kids do leave out reindeer food. We would put out reindeer food. It's about it's about buttering up the man himself. Santa, we leave the milk and cookies out, and yeah. so that was. Yeah, I guess I never left out rain, reindeer. We would leave fruit. out carrots. We didn't do that with ca carrots. Mm -hmm. More healthy. I think it's just trying to incorporate healthy. And there's a lot of junk food at Christmas. Well, I get it. What do reindeer eat? They don't eat milk and cookies. Are you sure? No, but they don't come down the chimney to get it. So oh, see, I thought they ate Chex Mix. I thought that's what reindeer ate, like Chex Mix. Are you the... serious? I've seen like reindeer food <laughs> recipes, and it looks a lot like Chex Mix to me. <laughs> I mean, if I was a reindeer, I'd be eating, like, Cocoa Puffs or something like that. That looks like reindeer food. <laughs> it does look like reindeer food. Okay, so they, they leave their... Now, like, we're crafty parents. I can just imagine, like, a really good parent would, like, make some sort of 
like donkey slobber to put in the shoe after they they've taken the food out and they're just like look there's donkey slobber in your shoe gross <laughs> well they were wooden shoes anyway gross. right i mean don't they wear wooden shoes there or used that to traditionally yes <laughs> so they clean up gross <laughs> all right here's a number for you okay. six million um calories in a christmas dinner <laughs> close <laughs> close Six million. It's the number of rolls of tape that will be sold in the UK up to Christmas. Just the UK? Yes. That's that's a lot. So I wonder what that would translate in worldwide because, I mean, UK is not a huge territory. No. That's crazy. Six million. All right, here's another number. Okay. 5.99 million. Leftover rolls of tape <laughs> at the end of it because you realize I don't need that much tape. Don't you over... I always overbuy. It's like I'm, I overbuy and then I have... But I usually have tape throughout the year. Yeah. So that's no. good. 5.99 million is the number of rolls where you can't find where the tape ends. <laughs> ah, so that was a joke too. That was just funny. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I, now let me ask you this. Are you one of those... Now, obviously, the, the scotch tape dispensers kind of hold themselves in place, but... Where you, are you one of those, if you just have like a roll of tape, that you fold the corner over so you can find it easier? I wish I was. I e every think time about you that. go to find it, you wish you uh -huh. I always think about that. Like, oh, you should have put a pencil or been really clever. There's people that use paper clips and no. no. I got really good at just using my fingernail to find it. Like you just rub it along the edge of the tape and then it clicks and you're like, oh, there it is. I don't even want to tell you how many minutes I've wasted over my lifetime trying to find tape. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to do that math. No, because it's, it's sad. That's it's funny. sad. That's funny. All right, here we go. We're going to Victorian England. Great. You ready? Let's pack our bags. All right, here it is. All right. One such tradition in Victorian England would be the cobweb party. So remember uh, how you talked last week about how spider webs yeah. are good luck in Christmas trees? Yeah, but you gr were grossed out by it, and so... No, why this would, is cool. Why would you do that? This why is would cool. you want to do... Well, you just hang out, you just gather all the cobwebs oh, in your right. house and... Okay. Throw so, it in the air like confetti. Woohoo! <laughs> no. Oh, the, that one still had a spider in it. You win. No? The cobweb Sorry. party. Each family member was assigned a color and then shown to a room that was crisscrossed in yarn of varying colors. Oh, so you, so you got to assign find, your yarn color. Yes. Yeah, so okay. you had to find you know, your color and follow the yarn to the presents. Well, that would be fun. Wouldn't that be fun? Until you have to clean it up. But yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, that's what parents do while kids are playing with the toys. I guess. I think I would probably just like walk through the house and look for my color. I wouldn't follow it. I would just run through the you house. You didn't know. So there could be multiple of your color and you have to find... Yeah, like there's okay. lots of different colors of yarn. So you're but just yeah, looking... all you're going to do is look... If like you're green, all you're going to do is look for green. But if they have... Like parents could, I guess, put on false leads. Yeah. You know, and, and those don't go anywhere. Okay. That's fun. I just think that's really, that'd be, really We did creative. something similar to that to one of Connor's birthday parties where like they had to cut the right string to lower a key to open a box or something like that. That was such an epic party. That was like the best birthday party ever. I, I wish I was a kid in that party. I know. It was very Indiana Jones. That was really, really cool. Okay, but this is about Christmas. This is Christmas. That was a birthday. So. All right, how much do you think the average American family spends on Christmas gifts? I'm going to guess somewhere between probably five and five million. So that's my... Between $5 and $5 million. Yeah, I'm guessing it's safely somewhere in there. <laughs> it is safely somewhere in there. Do I need to be more specific? $1,000. Okay. Nice round number for you. It's so round. I mean, it's like, it's not like, you think it'd be like, most Americans spend $876.23, but it's like 1000 It just sounds made up. You know that like 85% of t statistics are made up on the fly. You know that, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's what Abraham Lincoln said on the internet. That's right. Okay, so a thousand dollars. So obviously, some families don't spend that much. I don't think we're going to spend that much this year. No. And then some families spend well over that. Into I don't the think tens we've ever thousands. spent that much. Oh, I think we have, because some years we bought like TVs and stuff like that, and, and that's like counting our extended family and everything. Yeah, I think I guess. we've come close to that at least. But I guess. That doesn't count food or anything. That's just gifts. That's right? just gifts. Okay. All right. So speaking of cash, remember the Rubik's cube. Yes. Okay. The most popular gift in 1980. It was, it was Rubik's Cube. Wild. Funny, I just played with a Rubik's Cube this week. That's so funny. I, I still can't It was wildly it. popular. Yeah. How much is a Rubik's Cube today? Well, it's like 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. It comes in a really cool packaging. It's uh -huh. displayed nicely with the white, mm -hmm. with the logo facing you. Yeah. What did it cost in 1980? Oh, $1980. Um, 
I don't know, like, because it's old now, so its values dropped, I would imagine, unless the nostalgia makes it more expensive. I'm going to guess $4.99. <laughs> $1.99. Wow! You could buy a Rubik's Cube in 1980 for $1.99, and it was the most popular gift that year. And you could go to the movies for a quarter and get popcorn and a soda and have change left over. No, that was when my dad was a kid, not when I was a kid. <laughs> You ever get that when you were a kid? My, yes. my dad would tell me all about it. I'd go to the movies with a quarter, get a popcorn and a soda, come back with a nickel still. I was like, I know. Why are you doing this to me? I know. It's sad. But yeah, it's it's kind of gone up in price a little bit. It's a little, well, I do think it's nostalgia and I think it's like, you know, because it, it's the, now there's there's so many knockoffs and so many, I had an all silver one once. Ooh. Which sounds like, well, it must be easy to solve, but no, you had to, because it would like, it was weirdly shaped and you had to get the perfect cube. Otherwise, oh, I remember. That. Yeah, someone gave it to me. It's really, it probably my favorite Rubik's cube because that. if you had it wrong, the shapes were all different. It was like misshapen. Yeah. And when you got a perfect cube, then you got because it was silver on all sides. Anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's cool. So, do you have any other gifts? Okay, so I, I decided to look at our childhood. Okay. So I looked at about 1983 to 1987. Well, my childhood goes a little bit earlier than that, but now this is probably like what we really remember. Okay. All right, 1983. What was the most popular gift? That year, I feel like there should be Jeopardy. Movie. Atari Twenty Six Hundred. No. Well, you know what? No, it was early in that when we got our Ataris. It was like it was early eighties. So I don't know what. Cabbage Patch Dolls. Well, that's why I don't remember it. I never had a Cabbage Patch Doll. I did. It was uh, really cool. I wish I still had it. Yeah, they, they're worth stuff. I think. I loved it, and I thought it was funny was that they had the signature. Xavier Roberts on the on the bum. No, no, no. I thought it was weird that they actually sewed a belly button onto him. They all, they all had Audis, remember? They had little well, Audi belly buttons. Because how do you sew in any? That's weird. That wasn't that weird. You could buy diapers Oops. for him. That was... That's even weirder. Yeah, that was a little, that was a little much. Unless they actually made messes, but they didn't. No, thank goodness. No, but they did. They do have dolls that do that. That's not on the list. One no, that's not on the list. Tinkle dolls or whatever. Okay. All right, okay. so Cabbage Patch dolls. 1984. Mm. <laughs> the look on your face. Sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> We're going to go with Transformers. Correct. Okay, now I did have Transformers, so that's, yeah. That Correct. Makes sense. Now, do you remember the Transformer cartoon? Yeah. The movie? Oh, the cartoon movie. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think I ever saw that. Orson Welles actually was a voice. Really? And it, he died about eight months before it premiered. Was he like Optimus Prime? I don't something? know. I can see him being a good Optimus Prime. He had a great voice. Yeah, he did. Okay. okay. Now we're in 1985. Ooh, 1985. Am I, oh, I'm supposed to guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, we're just there. We're just right now in 1985. <laughs> uh, Job of the Hut. Action figure. <laughs> No, actually, that was earlier. I remember that was like eight. That was a for me. that was a toy. Oh yeah. What did you do with a Jabba the Hut toy? Well, he he had that little throne thing that he sat on, and then like you could pull him off and open it up and throw action figures down into it, like it was going into the ranker pit. It was cool. <laughs> just Jabba the Hut. I think his tail moved. Gross. I love my Jabba the Hut. That was like epic that year when I got that. I was like, yes, Jabba. Jabba. <laughs> but okay, so what 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 was it? Care Bears. Oh, again, something I wouldn't have had. So. I had a Care Bear. Well, so far, we've each of those years, one of us has had them. Yes. Right. All right. Now let's go to 1986. 1986. Now this would be more of your realm of, of interest, if that helps. Oh, Nintendo. Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo Game Boy. The Game Boy was out then? Yep. Man, I didn't, I had a Game Boy, but I didn't get it that year. It was several years later. I think that might have been the year I got a Nintendo, although I may have been 85. Okay, 1987. 1987. I'm ready for this. Well, <laughs> I say I'm ready. I... What was the most popular toy in 1987? Super Nintendo. <laughs> Teenage I mean... Mutant oh! Ninja Turtles. Heroes of the Half Shell. TMNT. Turtle Power. Yeah, okay. Well, you know they were actually out before then, but I'm guessing the, there was, they were starting to take yes, off. Yes, video games and toys. Because they were a comic just... book before that, but yeah, I guess that's about right. I remember my friends talking about them, and I was just imagining like 
turtle, like real normal turtles. I'm like, that no. sounds lame. And then they, then I saw a picture. I'm like, oh, yeah, those are pretty cool. Ninja Turtles are. And they're still, I mean, they're still doing Ninja Turtle stuff. They've gotten better. And, I like Ninja Turtles. So I was a fan. I never had the, the action figures. Though. I was not a collector of the Ninja Turtles. Oh, my brother had the whole, they, he even had the. The van, like the, yeah. it's not a play set, but you know, the no, super no, no, cool yeah, van. Yeah, the turtle van or whatever, yeah. turtle mobile or whatever. Yeah, see, I, it was 87, so I was 12. So I was kind of getting out of toys anyway by that point. Um, and I was more into video games, which clearly shows by my answers. Uh-huh. <laughs> Big fan of the video games. Yes. All right, so uh, 1988, do we get, are we done? No, we, we're because done? we're old now, so we stopped with our childhood. Because I was a teenager then. Yeah. Now... What do you think was the craziest, most popular toy? Where, like, the parents went bonkers. I know this one. What is it? I, I, I was not a child at the time, nor did I have a child, but I remember hearing about the mania involving Tickle Me Elmo. Correct! Yes, Tickle Me Elmo, there was something weird. I mean, that was, like, the first one I remember where people were just going nutters. It was like, you know, if you had one, people might knife you for one or something uh, just because you've got one. 1996. <laughs> So Jim Henson had already passed away. Right. The they retailed for thirty dollars, yeah. but in the mania you could buy one for eighty times more than its original price. So you're paying two hundred and forty dollars for Elmo. No, I'm not actually. And He's paying that much. There was actually parents caused at least one stampede that put a store employee in the hospital. Yeah, I I I, I remember that, and I, and I was like, why? Elmo, maybe, maybe for Bert and Ernie, uh, particularly Ernie, maybe hey. for Oscar the Grouch, maybe for, uh, was it Grover? Like Grover's my Super favorite. Super Grover, I could get behind. I could get behind, but not, not Elmo. I couldn't. I, I'm sorry. I, I'm not a fan of puppets that teach kids how to talk about them th- themselves in the third person. That just does not. And he got on my nerve. I'm sorry if you're an Elmo fan. Um, it's okay. You can, you can be that way, but he is just it, like, I was just expecting kids to go around. Mikey wants to do this. Susie wants to do that. And like talking about themselves in the third person. <laughs> and I was just like, this is, this is bad. Uh, so I was never, but, but the thing was, is like, what year was that? 90, 96. 96. So our son wasn't even born yet. No. And we were clearly... I mean, in 96, we were dating. So, uh, but I think I remember, because my sister had kids, I think I remember at that time, during that age, I think I remember them wanting them, but I don't know if she ever got one. So, we're now into 2019. Yeah, we are. And I looked at the most popular toys for this year. And just in case you want to, to buy some of these, the Baby Shark Official Dancing Doll is is it a shark doll or what it's like a stuffy that dances wow you knew baby shark was gonna yeah do 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 walking buzz lightyear from the toy story 4 movie okay that's on the list cute tito's it is a baby doll wrapped in a burrito blanket okay and if that's not weird enough for you they're called there's another one it's called bloom dolls they're dolls hidden in a flower pot that grow when you add water. Okay, you, you forgot you forgot two very important ones. <laughs> Baby Yoda, which people are dying to get one of those. Yeah. Like I think everybody wants a Baby Yoda. This that's I mean, I am shocked that, that Disney has not I don't know if they're out. I don't even think they're I out. I like Baby Yoda. But it, as soon as they hit the market, it's gonna be people getting trampled to death. I know. You. Uh, and of course, Piggy and the Bear, Santa's Little Helpers. That's got to be on the top of the Christmas list. I looked; uh, it's not yet. Sorry, shameless plug time. Are you ready? Bum bum bum. Piggy and the Bear, Santa's Little Helpers is getting closer and closer to Christmas. But you can get yours on Amazon. You can get it Prime, so you could have yours in just two days uh, if you ordered it. And so, yeah, you want to check that out because, like, the Piggy and the Bear book, it's pretty awesome. And it is amazing. I'm not bragging. Well, I'm maybe a little bit. I don't like to brag. And, like, I'm just giving what other people have said. They love the book. We saw a video of a parent that sent, uh, they sent us about their kid. And he, like, I don't even know if he knew there was a Christmas one. But, like, he had his eyes closed and he opened his eyes. He's like, they have a Christmas one! And he freaked out. So, I'm not, this is just real data here. I'm not blowing smoke. I think I said that last week. 
This is just, it's a fun book, and I we had fun writing it, of It course. is kid-tested and highly kid-approved. Yes, and not like kicks, which only the mothers approved yeah, of. Yeah, no, no. The kids didn't approve of that. But anyway, uh, I had fun drawing it. It has some of my favorite art in it this time. Like, the I, my favorite is when they're decorating for Christmas, and I think your favorite is when they're wrapping gifts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so there's some good stuff in it, but you gotta buy it to see it. That's true. Uh, and if you're like, I don't know if I want to buy a whole book, you can get the ebook and it's a lot cheaper, and you can still enjoy it and take it anywhere you go. That's right. And then tell other people to buy it. Anyway, the shameless plug is over. Back to your regularly scheduled nonsense podcast. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, that's the 2019 most 2019. popular gifts. I never heard of any of those, except Buzz Lightyear I've heard of, but I didn't know about the well, walking. I don't know. I don't get that. The but. doll and the burrito blanket confused me a little, and the doll and the flower pot. Well, I did see an advertisement for burrito blankets, though. Now they, they sell blankets that look like giant tortilla shells, huh. and you can wrap yourself in them like a burrito. Don't so. love that. I don't hate it. I'd rather eat a burrito than wear one, though. Yeah, that's true. I love burritos, but... Uh, <laughs> Maybe doing that for lunch today. Who knows? But anyway, I like uh, that. Is funny. It's it's interesting. I, none of those I've ever heard of except Buzz Lightyear. What was that first one you said? Baby Shark. Oh, the Baby Shark. I, I've heard of Baby Shark, doll. but I didn't know they had a dancing doll. So, I didn't either. Uh, okay, well. so let me ask you this this question. I, okay. I'm sure growing up that you have you've had lots of favorite presents. Nope. That you've received. My Christmases were horrible. No, actually, I do have. But, I, I I feel like I've got some great gifts over time. Yeah. Okay. What was your favorite present you ever gave? Oh. Um, like you were so excited to give this person this gift. Um, your wedding ring. No, I'm sorry. That wasn't Christmas. That wasn't Christmas. <laughs> Just nice trying try. to earn some husband points there. Uh, the other gift I was thinking was also, it was your birthday, and, and that was really nice, and you liked that. But that was not. Uh, the favorite gift I've ever given um Man, I mean, there's there's a lot I've always felt. The Piggy and the Bear books. And, no, I'm just sorry. That was bad. Uh, I would have to say um, there's some things we got Connor that I would think we really, he really enjoyed. I would, I would have to say probably my favorite was The Way We Gave. No, that was his birthday. We did Connor's birthday really well. I was thinking mm -hmm. the Blues Clues. No, that was Christmas. No, Blues Clues was his birthday. That was his birthday because I was thinking that was so fun how we did that because we it was when Blues Clues was popular and we put up a bunch of paws, and Connor had to follow the clues, but that was, that was I don't know birthday. why I thought that was Christmas. No. Ooh. Yeah, so I'm thinking a lot of great gifts, but I can't think of specifically Christmas uh, gifts. Are you thinking, can you think of one? Maybe it'll spur something in my mind. No, I, we got You Connor. wrote this, and you didn't have one already ready no, to go? No, I just wrote Connor. So. Like, that's what I wrote for that spot, anything we've given Connor, because I love watching his face when he opens yeah. it, because... Even if he doesn't like the gift, like, the lad is so polite. Yeah, he's good. This is awesome. Thank you so much. He's good. If you ever give our son a gift, you will not know if he really likes it. Just be honest. But, <laughs> he's really good at, at being appreciative. Because he appreciates the thought. Um, you we know, got him something one year, and I thought he cried. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what it was. I don't know. We got him a camera last year because he was really getting into filming stuff. And so we got him a camera. He loved that. Um, got him a laptop once, which he liked. I don't think that was like super, but I'm trying to think if there's anything that was like super personal for him. And I can't, honestly. So. Me neither. Oh, I, I, I remember like I got you a, a ring one year cause your wedding ring is always kind of big. It was a big old rock on that ring. No, it just kind of stuck out a lot. And so you were always afraid of scraping, like, especially when Connor was a baby, yeah. scraping his head with your ring and things. And so it was after he was no longer a baby, but you still had issues with, like, scraping stuff. And so I got your ring one year, and you, I think you cried with that one. I did. And so I, I got you kind of a replacement wedding band that's not so sticky outy. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's probably, and you really liked it. And so. There you go. I got one. But yeah, there's lots of years, Connor. Like, he really, you know, does a good job of appreciating the gift. I think it's more fun to give a gift than receive a gift. Yeah, I... Uh, I mean, I love gifts. I love getting gifts. I Yes, the, the you know, the, the radio in, voice in me says, yes, it's better to give and receive. But come on, we enjoy getting gifts, too. I love getting gifts. Absolutely. No, I enjoy, I enjoy giving gifts. I, I agonize over finding gifts, though. That's the thing that I don't like. It's not that I don't... I love being generous to people. I love making people happy. I cannot stand shopping for gifts because I just, like, sometimes don't know what people like. So I'm like, here's here's $28 cash. Merry Christmas. 
<laughs> you know, or something like that. I'm happy with that. But it's like when I'm like really thinking of trying to think of what someone like, unless they've said what they like. Yeah. It's agony for me. I just, I want, because I want it to be good. I want them to like it. Yeah. And so I'm not the kind of guy who's just going to throw something at you and, and think, Oh, I like it. You'll like it too. I, I agonize. And so. I think that should be our poll this week. Is it easy for you to shop for people for Christmas? There you go. Is shopping for others easy for you? And if it is easy for you, I would just encourage you to think about putting yourself in the receiver's shoes. Because <laughs> if it's too easy, maybe you're not really thinking about it enough. <laughs> yeah, I struggle. I don't think it's easy to shop for other people. I am like, hey, they love gift cards, right? Here's a gift card for you and a gift card. I'm like the Oprah right with size. the gift card. You get a gift card and you get a gift card. And, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Hey, it's the right size and it always fits. And, you know, yeah. it's the color that they want. Yeah. And yeah. It's pretty Unless much Unless it's like a gift card to, to iTunes and they have Androids or something like that. Yeah, that's not good. So <laughs> you got to get the Google Play gift card. Or, that's uh, right. Uh, Amazon gift cards are always great. And that's where you can buy the Piggy and the Bear book. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's a three-part triple like, whammy on the, the, the... Looks like we filled our commercial quota for oh this my podcast. Goodness. I'm so, I apologize. I, I'm so sorry. Uh, I am excited about the book, though. But no, I, I love giving. I do. And like whenever like our church does this like giving thing at, at schools where kids get gifts, and I love it because you're seeing... Fantastic. And I love being a part of that. But um, if I'm actually shopping for someone that, oh, yeah, I, I get like sweaty and my chest hurts. and <laughs> Yeah. And I need lots of caffeine to keep me going. And, and yeah, I love being like a giver. I just I want to make sure it's what they want. And so that's the part that's hard. That's good. Well, we so, want to know what you think. Yeah. Do you have a hard time giving gifts? Is it easy for you? Um, shopping for gifts. You have shopping. a hard time shopping for gifts. We know every one of you who are listening to this are generous people. We know you love to give. So we, we're not going to ask, do you, would you rather give or receive gifts like Kim did to me? She just kind of <laughs> sideswiped me with that one. Cause we know we, we like getting gifts. And I think we, if we were all being honest, we do feel great when we give other people gifts yeah. and we love that. But is it easy for you to shop for other people? That's what we want to know. Do you, do you, do you have a problem? You know, do you have like a hard time with that? Or is I it have easy? anxiety in the store. Yeah. And then we usually do many times in years past. It's just like, let's just get a whole bunch of gift cards. Let's just do that. And, and, uh, but I don't like to do that. I'd rather no, know what they want. No, that seems like cheating. It. Yeah. We want to know what you think, but thanks for listening. And next week we're going to be talking about Christmas future. Futures. We're going to talk about stock options, right? Futures. And... I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even know what we're going to talk about next week, but it's going to be Christmas Hey, but future. we're going to talk about it in the future. Because so... future is coming up. Like, it, it'll release, like, the week before Christmas. Yeah. And then the day after that is Boxing Day. And that's when our last episode of the year will play. And I don't know what we're going to talk about. Boxing, I guess. What that means. What does it look like to box? We'll get into that. But I got some things I, I, I'm thinking about would be fun with that. But in the meantime, Merry Christmas. Merry and Christmas. have a great time shopping for those loved ones in your life. Bye-bye. <laughs>